Hello everyone, it's me, Xeno, your favorite Tremere, back again, a little bit late this time, but still, uh, with another Bloodlines 2 uh, stuff, yes, we'll be, we will be talking today about the yesterday's Death Diary, uh, yes, like I said, I'm a little bit late, because this diary was released yesterday, and why right now? Why am I filming this now and not yesterday? Well, I was occupied by other matters, let's say. But we're here now and that is what matters right now. So yes, Death Diary 18, Building Our Seattle. So, I already read this, so I know uh, what is it about, but still I would like to share some insights that I have in my Tremere brain, that I uh, thought of. So, let's read first. Welcome, kindred, to another Bloodlines to Death Diary from the team at the Chinese Room, obviously. In this diary, we want to give you some further insight into the choices we've made when building our version of Seattle. See the diary 8 for uh, my previous statements on building Seattle for World of Darkness. Uh, I don't think I did a video about the, this Dev Diary 8, and I'm not going to because, well, it's a little bit too late right now, but still, let's continue. Seattle is at the heart of the game, which you will return to again and again between quests or sometimes during them. So it will be like a very big hub, I guess. We go there through Seattle and things happen in Seattle. So kind of like in Bloodlines 1, I think, maybe, we'll see. Uh, it is the most human location in the game where you are vulnerable to being exposed as a vampire, aka the masquerade bridge, bridging the masquerade, resulting in swift and violent justice from the vampires of the Camarilla that rule the city. Aren't we the sheriff? So we should uh, execute this justice. I think uh, hunters are uh, more of a threat when we break them up to raid, but, well, okay. Uh, it is also a kind of vampire playground where you can feed on humans in order to restore your vampiric powers or just for the thrill of the hunt. We hope this diary gives you a taste of what you will experience when stalking the streets and rooftops of the Emerald City. Project Creative Director Alex Skidmore. So, uh, from this first paragraph, what we can conclude that Seattle will be somehow open and we will have multiple layers to it. So, uh, streets uh, and rooftops. So, we will be able to climb uh, buildings and go on rooftops, so there will be multiple layers to the city. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it uh, will be open, kinda, maybe. Uh, for sure there will be some space for us to hunt, to hide, to run, uh, and do other stuff. And I'm really excited about that aspect. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Preview for the future Dev Diaries will have uh, something about traversal, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we will see that uh, on, on the bottom of this Dev Diary, the what's next part. But for now, let's focus here. And what do we have here? Visit the Weaver Tower, a seat of power for the Camarilla Court. Weaver. 
is that a werewolf reference uh, or is it not a werewolf re reference? Uh, for those who don't know, a weaver mm, in the werewolf the apocalypse cosmology is like one of the three big forces in the universe which uh, makes things stable. Mm, yeah, there is uh, the the world, world, which creates things, weather, which you no, know, makes it not fall apart, and then there is the worm, uh, with which we are more than familiar with most of us at least, which uh, is the force of destruction, decay, and you no know, dying, but that's not important right now. <clears throat> It's not a werewolf time, it's vampire time. I will have to do some video on werewolves in the future. We'll see. <sighs> oh, I see Atrium here, so... Building the player's movement through Seattle, we really wanted to create traversal that interacted with the masquerade and reinforced the vampiric experience. Fire, so our protagonist, has some absurd movement from the get-go, being able to immediately, immensely fast dash and glide through the air and can move faster while still using discipline abilities later. Okay, but of course do any of this on the streets without obfuscation and you'll quickly find yourself breaching the masquerade. So we will have a masquerade mechanic, like in the first Bloodlines, where uh, if we use our powers in public, uh, then the masquerade, per perhaps we have uh, like a masquerade bar, uh, points of masquerade or something, and if we lose enough of them or fill the ma masquerade bridge meter or something, then bad things will happen, like uh, hunters, uh, Camarilla, Alarx, maybe Sabat, or other stuff like that. But yeah, like I said about traversal earlier, earlier uh, fire is fast, agile, can jump on rooftops, and I am on board with it. I love it. And here we have Atrium, our favorite club. It looks a little bit different than in the original Hard Suits Labs version, but still. The Atrium Club where you will meet the enthralling Isabella. So not Elif, sadly. To my great displeasure, to my great disappointment and to my uh, broken undead heart, sadly, all signs on earth and s sky tell us that there will be no Elif in the game. I still have hope and I'm s I still will sacrifice whoever I need to perform rituals to make Elif happen. But from what we see here, what we can uh, deduce, that Elif is not running the Atrium. Which is heartbreaking. Sadly. I still hope that Elif will appear in some shape or form in the game as Elif. Maybe under other name like uh, Tolly was Samuel before. But Elif, please, come on. Chinese room. If someone is watching, come on, please. <laughs> Give us Elif in some shape or form. <clears throat> but my broken undead heart aside, let's continue reading. Dark alleyways don't just give you a quieter place to fit on prey, they also provide routes up to Seattle's rooftops. Cool. Up here there's fewer praying eyes, so you can really let your capabilities loose, moving fast and leaping between buildings. The local anarchs won't be thrilled about you moving through the rooftops, rooftop turf though, so it's a dangerous place for the weak or uninitiated. Ah, uh, these Anarchs, uh, they're always so tense about uh, everything, basically. 
I'm jumping on rooftops, so so what? I'm not hurting anyone. Let me jump on rooftops. I like the wind. This means there's a choice to be made at any point between danger to the masquerade and danger to yourself. Finding yourself drawn to the kinds of places vampires would lurk is the goal of this arrangement. As you regain your powers as an elder, you'll also be more capable of moving as you please. I'm really looking forward to seeing people master it. So there will be some a level of mastery on our traversal. Perhaps uh, combining our, you know, the usual vampiric athletic capabilities and our disciplines in many ways from what we saw in the uh, gameplay reveal fire can glide uh, through the air can jump really high can climb run uh, so there will be traversal won't be boring let's say it like that <clears throat> and i'm looking forward to it just like the senior game designer Marks Bottomley, a name uh, that we already know, but yeah. Since joining the Bloodlines 2 team, a key responsibility I've undertaken is bringing life to a key area of the game, our Seattle. So we have people working especially on, C on the city itself, so that's cool. Uh, the Glacier Hotel is where you find Lou Graham, so our uh, not so much of a Toreador uh, vampire lady. Yeah, she, she's a venture for reasons unknown to me, but she is. Still a Toreador in my head, but uh, yeah, reality is often disappointing. But we will find her here. In a hotel, the glacier. Moving on, uh, working closely with the environment team, I wanted to make sure that as players explore the world, it feels both alive and reactive to what they are doing. Players will discover a wide variety of people going about their daily or nightly lives. We've crafted a personality for the city that complements its unique setting, mood, and layout. Time has been taken to map out city districts that favor different types of NPCs. You'll be able to sit back and watch the world move on around you. So the world will be alive. Well, when NPCs will just do their things, there will be police, there will be drunk people and other interesting stuff. When you walk around the corner, you never know what you'll find. Maybe it's a businessman arguing on his phone or a graffiti artist improvising the local ar artwork. It could be a car thief struggling to break into a car or even a sex worker making good on their promise with a client. So the world is alive in one way or another and that's good i'm also looking forward to this aspect it won't be boring because let's be honest in first bloodlines the world was still kind of alive there were some random events like the uh, gangsters fighting each other sometimes there are drunk people going here and there, and but uh, nothing much really was happening there. And he, but here it will be more alive, more colorful in a way, and that's good. You might meet all sorts of people in the steady underbelly of Seattle, like we can see here. A charming uh, lady on the left most likely a uh, how, how do we call her a 
Mm, body vendor. Mm-hmm. Oh, pleasure vendor. That, that's good. I, I like this. Pleasure vendor. Yeah. And other people here. On the bike, on the right. And other stuff. Let's move on. We've been filling the world with characters that actually do things. Taking breaks on seats, telling the police about crimes they've seen, or seeing the police chasing down a criminal. The world turns with you, it should feel like you're just passing through, and as the player you can interact or just sit back and watch. I'm curious how they... How will they pull it off? Because the world, maybe it will be like in hubs, the city will be divided in areas to which we you know go we have a loading screen and uh, pass to the other uh, because having a huge city full of things happening outside of our immediate perce- uh, perception well it's a task to do <laughs> so uh, i am looking forward to seeing how uh, how they will pull it off Uh, Working on this stuff and building out a believable world where bikers drink outside bars or start fights with you has been a hell of a lot of work, like I said. Uh, But I hope people will find it a fun place to explore. Most likely, yeah. Uh, I sure will. This city isn't a combat It's also home to exploration and interactions with the inhabitants of Seattle. So the city itself will tell a story. Places we will go to, each alleyway will tell a story. Perhaps someone was killed there, some drunk uh, vomited on the wall next to this trash can and it will be alive. What do we have here? Wake the dead. Join Mirs Storm or perhaps run into Safia at Wake the Dead Cafe. Safia is cute. Miss Storm is uh, very respected. But still no our favorite female Tremere, uh, Elif. Of course, favorite in the terms of Bloodlines too. Because of, of course, Merlinda, Isling, Stormbridge, all very, very held in high esteem, but you know, Elif. Let's move on. As with many other areas of the game, a large part of what we wanted to to give players was choice. Some of that choice comes down to what conversations you'll have with some of the NPCs and characters you will meet in the city. Use your vampiric charms to seduce someone, proposition a sex worker, some with pleasure vendor, or flip off some angry bikers with a bruja approved hand gesture, so the middle finger basically. Uh, So yeah, we can seduce people and we can uh, make propositions to pleasure vendors, Uh, that's good. The first time you try to flirt with a pleasure vendor, in the game and get turned down because your choice of clothing didn't impress them will be an eye-opener. I don't know if pleasure vendors really have a choice in being picky about their clients. I I mean, uh, sure, it's it's a job they can uh, refuse, but if you're in this line of work, I don't think you should be picky. Of course, if someone is uh, gross or no, then I don't know. But still. So even pleasure vendors will have their own character. In a way. Lead game designer Gavin Hood. Seattle plays a big part in our game. I mean, obviously, it is the main location of the game. Uh, in both setting the tone of the game and providing an ec- exciting and alluring space for players to explore and discover. Yeah. Whether 
is the vibrant, ethereal world of Nick Miller's photography. Uh, you should check out this guy. Amazing work. Amazing uh, pictures. Or the majesty of a real-world American metropolis like Seattle. It's been really important for us to capture these moments and inject it uniquely into our take on a city inside the world of darkness. That sounds promising. Uh, a view from the ground in our city. So we have a construction site. Construction sites are cool. Let's continue. One of the ways we've done this is to focus on making Seattle feel exaggerated, seen through the heightened reality of a 300-year-old elder, exaggerating building heights to make most untraversable or phrase uh, tree trunking has helped to do this both visually and viscerally. Unlike a superhero gliding over a city, we're creating a world that forces you to be part of it, running through alleyways or gliding across rooftops. You're never above it or beneath, but really part of it. You can't beat the feeling of stalking on a victim along a ledge of a building precipes with a whole towering city above you. That sounds really interesting, and I can't wait to earn something in the city. Associate Art Director Ben Matthews, also a name we know. Let's continue. Hey, a fellow kindred, I'm super stoked to give you a sneak peek of Seattle. You'll be sinking your funks into In Bloodlines 2. Okay. We're bringing that gritty, atmospheric and immersive vibe that made the original Bloodlines such a cult classic into our version of Seattle, making sure every alleyway, rooftop and hidden corner feels like it belongs in the world of darkness. So like I said, in Bloodlines 1, places told the story. The, uh, the city itself, uh, LA, every location in LA, has it had its own character. The city uh, was itself uh, a character in this game. So, if they will manage to do that here, then Shapoba, as they said. But let's continue. You'll be stalking through Pioneer Square, lurking around downtown and exploring our take on Chinatown, all wrapped in a snowy, seedy nighttime setting that bleeds neon noir. Shaping parts of Seattle to fit our setting has been one of the coolest parts of making this while working with the latest tech. Our favorite bits have definitely been creating those hidden details. Cryptic setups, narrative clues with deeper meanings just waiting for you to uncover. So like I said, places will tell a story just by looking at them. Visit the Dutchman to meet all manners of punks and bikers and possibly meet Silky. So the Bruja Primogen who doesn't look very camarilly, more anarchy, but is a primogen, so. Each distinct district has its own distinct vibe. Uh, whether it's the cold corporate chill of the financial sector or the vibrant pulse of Chinatown. We're using lighting and color to set the mood and make each area feel unique and immersive. So, re reading this, I feel the leaning more towards the uh, Seattle being divided into parts, into like uh, bigger hub areas across which we can you know, 
go from one to the other with a loading screen or perhaps without a loading screen or it all will be just you know one big world uh, across which we just smoothly travel both both will be good both will be good <clears throat> We've been using a hybrid workflow to bring this city to life, combining Houdini for our building structures with modular kits for shop fronts, alley walls and rooftop dressing. But what really gets us excited is the storytelling dioramas we've crafted into each block. Whether it's a hint of a backstory, a touch of conflict, or just a nod to something darker beneath the surface. We, we've worked hard to make every corner feel like it has a story to tell. So, like I was saying through this whole video, the city will tell a story. Every place, every block, wall, well, maybe not to this level, but still. This lets us give each block its own flavor while weaving them all together into a large narrative tapestry that not only looks great but feels alive and full of stories all while being optimized for performance i can't wait for you to sink your teeth into this fresh take on seattle kindred so us Get ready to embrace the night. Lead environment artist Genesis Asis. Very, very interesting stuff and uh, upcoming developer diaries. Uh, the next one will be October 9th, uh, Hunting and Feeding. Next, October 21st. Blood Resonance and Dev Daily 21 Fashion Fashion Matters November 6. I'm excited okay. about the well all of them basically because hunting and feeding is an important mechanic and blood resonance will you know, tie into the hunting and feeding. And fashion matters well I'm a big sucker for vampire fashion. I love Blood, blood hunt, vampire the masked blood hunt. Uh, so that pretty much uh, tells you everything. Uh, so I can't wait for all of those. I'm waiting, and most likely I will make videos about them. We'll see. Uh, but to summarize, uh, all these things we just read. Let's stop at Atrium to remind ourselves of Elif. Of what we could have have and what maybe we will have perhaps but you know uh, so yeah city will be alive Seattle will live it will be its own character it will tell a story every NPC every place every wall every alley uh, every rooftop will tell us something like I said, someone was murdered here, someone puked there, etc. And traversal, well, fire is agile, fast, strong, can jump, glide, and use disciplines to travel, travel through the streets, alleyways, perhaps uh, the sewers, maybe, uh, and of course rooftops, uh, and the masquerade mechanic. So. Breaking the masquerade is never good, unless you sabbat them, obviously. Uh, but yeah, masquerade will be an important mechanic. We break masquerade too many times, we get into trouble. Hunters, Camarilla enforcement, uh, Beast of Anarchs, werewolves, who knows, maybe. Uh, but yeah, I'm very happy with all of these informations. A lot of cool insight into what we can expect. Uh, and yeah, so that's all for this video. Uh, the next one is October 9th, so two weeks from now. Uh, 
And I'll see you then, I guess. We'll see. Bye-bye.